This is the WealthNet Market Call of the Week, highlighting investment trends that could affect your wealth. Globally aware with a geopolitical and quantitative perspective. Hi, I'm Louis Giannis with WealthNet Investments, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about volatility. Everybody hears that word volatility, and it's batted around so much it makes you wonder what it really means. And I'm going to talk about volatility from a very singular perspective, and that perspective has to do with whether or not movement is very wide in price action or very narrow in price action, and it can be anywhere in between. Instead of talking about option volatility, which is something that a lot of people really talk about very often, I'm going to be talking about the actual realized volatility, the volatility that you actually see in the price action of the underlying securities, whether it be a stock or a bond or a commodity or a currency. What I'm really interested in and in, in, in what really makes a difference in your actual investment uh, performance is the underlying volatility of your instrument and what direction it has and also whether you're on the right side of that direction. And I'm gonna talk specifically about a, uh, the importance of volatility in the setup. Now, the last market call that I did, I talked a lot about the setup, or I talked a little bit about, I should say, about the setup. And the setup, uh, how important it was, and how the different types of things that you can look at for a setup to be profitable. Now, one of the most important volatility setups that I've seen is the fact that when volatility is extremely high, it's usually really obvious. Either the price action has moved uh, down a lot or the price action has moved up a lot. And in the marketplace now with so many eyeballs looking at the markets and the charts and the, the data, there's all these computers crunching numbers, it's very difficult and sometimes often easy to, uh, to make mistakes. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to actually be in a position where you're looking at markets that are quiet. This is something that is actually counterintuitive. Now, a lot of day traders and people like that always look for uh, high volume screens and screens where there's the most actives. And there are strategies clearly that can be done around that. But what I'm talking about here is something a little bit different. I'm talking about actually looking for setups that have already occurred where you have the right conditions for an investment opportunity. However, right now it's not fully recognized and you're seeing light volume and light volatility. Now, a colleague in mine did some research and, and, um, and I've been looking at volatility for years. And one of the things that was really counter counterintuitive when you look at the data is that when volume is actually light compared to what it normally is. So let's say a company, uh, IBM, for example, normally has an average volume of like a million shares, just to make it a simple round number. So on, on every day, uh, it generally has a volume of a million shares. And let's say that the market has a volume of two million shares just to make the numbers work out. So if uh, on average, the ratio uh, between IBM's volume and the market's volume is 1 million divided by two, 2 million, right? That would be kind of a normal ratio. So one of the things you can look at is kind of the volume relative to what it normally is trading at and how is it trading right now. And when you actually break the cycle down, so uh, I did a study where I actually looked at the volume uh, compared to its average. And if you look at the monthly data, when you actually have a month where volume is lower than normally expected, what's interesting is in the ne next month, you tend to have more outperformance. You tend to have more volatility. And many times, just since most of the time the market's moving higher, you tend to see it moving to the upside now on average. But what's important about this is you can refine that even more by having setups that even put the odds more in your favor. And it's a confirming indicator. Volume being low and volatility being low usually proceeds to volume going up and volatility going up. It makes sense. It's kind of mean reversion. So you have the average and then it kind of goes below it and above it. And if you chart volatility, it's very, very similar. And one of the things that I like to do is I created an indicator called the APR or average percent range. And what it does is it looks at um, the, the price action, including gaps, uh, it, it basically the true range, which is a, a common indicator, but it also compares that relative to the price of the prior day's close so that you can see the percent moves, which is really, really important because then you can normalize that to wherever the market is. And if you look at the percent moves, you can actually see, including the gaps, where the market is relative to the average and where it is uh, relative to where it is right now. And if you have low volatility, low volume, and you have all your other pre, uh, predetermined criteria, good valuation or good, good momentum, whatever those factors are, that's actually a great place to, to begin to actually be ready to pounce. 
You want to be ready to pounce but while it's quiet. Now, if you wait till after it already happens, doesn't mean you're, you've missed the boat because many times that actually works too. But in today's market, with all the algorithms that you see, you've got many different algorithms that basically try to pick up on limit orders. Uh, on If they're buying, they try to, to pick up below the market, try to improve, improve execution using VWAP and other in types of indicators. And, and, and so you're trying you see a, a tendency for kind of volatility pumping where you see the, the price action move and then it kind of dro drops back some fades and and then institutions will come and pick up on the fade if they're if they're if they're supporting a stock and vice versa if they're selling a stock you'll see a, a big sell-off and then you'll see a kind of a drift up and then a, another sell-off and so this mean reversion type action, uh, you you want to kind of avoid being caught on the wrong side of that when you're actually looking at your entries. So, and I'm, I'm really talking at the micro level here, but in general, volume being light is, is really important. In fact, it reminds me of William O'Neill, uh, one of the things that he talked about many back in the day. He's the founder of Investors Business Daily. One of the things that he talked about was how you wanted to have a proper base in stocks. And what he did was he looked at the most common, uh, uh, or the stocks that did the, the best over many different uh, market cycles. And he found that many of them came out of a base. They were, they're kind of trading sideways and then the, the you know, volume tended to dry up because there was no more sellers and then the buyers came in. This is actually uh, verified with the quantitative data that we've seen. And, uh, you know, that's what you want to look for. Many times after a correction, like we've recently seen, uh, you can you can find companies that have good fu strong fundamentals, and uh, you've seen the selling dry up, and then uh, and you see volume really light, but it's basically buying volume, and then once there's no more uh, selling volume available, the the path of least resistance is for that stock to move higher, and it could also go the other way. Now this works for really uh, many different uh, uh, types of vehicles. It can work for futures in terms of stocks, bonds, and commodity futures, uh, currencies, but. The, the idea is that you want to be able to pounce when volume is light. You want to be ready. And then, and then you, you want to be anticipating. And as it's happening, then you can actually strike right when it makes the most sense. That's one of the most important things that I'm finding in terms of the minor execution, meaning the actual entry of, of investments. All right. This is Lewis Giannis with WealthNet Investments and Giannis Research. I hope you have a good, happy day and happy trading and investing. If you like this information, be sure to subscribe and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. The market calls are designed for informational purposes and should not be considered investments advice. As always, do your homework, assess the risk, and invest in light of your personal goals.